Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Taron Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, it's Thriller Thursday, and this one comes from one of our Weirdo family members. It's called The Legend of the Ice Truck by Lycan Trucker, which is a really cool pen name if you ask me. If you're new here, welcome to the show. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to win our contests, to connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. The day started like any other day out here on the ice roads. My name is Lycan Trucker. No, that's not my actual name, it's a CB call handle. Anyway, my given name has nothing to do with the story. I was sitting in the diner, enjoying my lunch when I was approached by another driver. This was going to be a large run. I was coming to the end of the ice road as the ice was starting to thaw, and we had to get these loads delivered to the villages that are only accessible during the ice road season. It was going to be a small convoy. I'm fairly young, but quite experienced with this type of run. Because of this, they had given me the lead spot in the convoy. I wasn't worried. I was confident in my abilities to perform the job at hand. As I mentioned earlier, I was approached by another driver in the diner. He was going to be part of the convoy making the run. I figured he would want to discuss the run. He's a much older man. We call him Old Timer. That's his CB call handle. The story he shared with me chilled me to the core. It was actually more of a warning than a story. I kind of laughed it off, but I could tell he was dead serious. He also had this fear in his eyes. He did remind me, however, that I needed to plan for the worst-case scenario out on the ice. Pull up a seat, son, old-timer says. I got something I need to tell you before we head out today. I pulled up a seat and asked what was on his mind. This is what he told me. There's something strange going on out here, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Legend tells of a truck like no other. It's clear as glass, except for the red glow from its headlights. Said to be as red as the eyes of Satan himself, and the smoke and flames that bellow from its stacks. Said to be forged from the coals of hell. The reason why it's clear is because the truck is made of the very thing that ended it long ago. I think I might be getting a bit ahead of myself. You see, the truck is made of ice. You really don't ever want to see this truck coming your way. Many of great drivers have lost their lives from encounters with the ice truck. Many others have gone straight to the nut house. I let out a chuckle. <laughs> Says one of those creepy pasta tales. Boy, you think I'm going to waste my breath on some fantasy bullcrap? If you ain't going to be listening more seriously than we done here. You understand, Junior? Uh, yes, yes, uh, of course. Please continue. I'm sorry. Let me start from the very beginning. How the ice truck came to be in the first place. There was once an old-timer ice road trucker that had himself quite the reputation, but not the good kind. See, he was ruthless, evil vindictive. Get what I'm saying? He was a bad man. We called him Old Man Winter. He'd run drivers into snowbanks just for the fun of it. Drivers had even said that he'd get on the radio and taunt them while laughing hysterically, like some kind of lunatic madman. Luckily, no one had lost their lives from his antics. 
One day, a young rookie joined the ranks of the Ice Road Truckers. We just called him Rook. He was very arrogant and wanted to make a name for himself, kind of like you. Hey, just keep listening, boy. He wanted to climb the ranks as quick as possible. He was a good man, however, and kept focusing on what he could do to earn everybody's respect and land himself a top spot among the ice truckers. That's when he heard about the things that old man Winter had been pulling on the other drivers. He then started formulating a plot on how he could take on old man Winter. Okay, so what happened then? I'm getting to it if you just let me finish. Mom's doing dang young folks and was always in a hurry, don't know anything. Anyway, one day, things just so happened to fall into place. And old man Winter and Rook were heading face to face on one of the worst parts of the ice road. This is the moment. They both lined each other up in a sadistic game of chicken, neither one willing to back down or give in to the other. As they approach one another, they both make the split decision to swerve. The mirrors of both trucks make contact with each other and are ripped from the trucks. Holy crap! I blurt out uncontrollably. Everyone in the diner stops talking for a second and turns to stare at me before continuing to go about their own business. If you're finished with your outburst, may I continue? I nod my head yes for him to continue. Rook, having faster reaction time, was able to regain control of his truck and slows to a stop along the snowbank. Old Man Winter wasn't so lucky, unfortunately. Dang, I say in a low whisper while shaking my head back and forth. Old Timer continues his story. His truck ended up getting lodged in the snowbank on his side of the ice road. The wake created by the speed and impact of the two trucks caused the ice to crack and give way directly under Old Man Winter's truck, causing his truck to sink, taking him with it. Wow, that's an unfortunate ending. I ain't done yet, Junior! He scowled while looking at me harshly. Rook was so upset over what had happened, he retired as a driver that day, moved south into the U.S. I could see why I'd probably do the same thing. Oldtimer looks at me with some disgust on his face, shaking his head back and forth. Anyways, Rook has no idea what hell he unleashed on the remaining ice road truckers out here. You see it now? The ice truck and its driver are none other than the spirit of old man Winter, destined to roam the ice roads, seeking revenge on the one who sent him to his icy grave. Without Rook around, the ice truck is now on a never-ending mission, leaving nothing but death and destruction in its wake. The drivers that have survived the encounter with the ice truck have ended up in the nuthouse. Speak of seeing the red glow of the headlights and seeing the dark clouds of smoke and fire coming from the stacks followed by a roar that only something straight from hell could produce. It also brings the worst winter storms you could imagine. So wait, you think everything that's been going on for the last couple of years has been due to this thing? This entity? This this spirit of Old Man Winter? <laughs> that is some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard, old-timer. Uh, I truly don't mean any respect, but you might want to lay off the alcohol before taking on a job like this. Well, child, much disrespect, Teakin. You can think what you want about me, though. Call me crazy even if you feel like it, but how do you explain all the freak winter storms of late and the condition of the drivers that have been caught up in them, hmm? I can tell you how to survive, though. I mean, if you're still willing to listen. Um, <laughs> sure, okay, yeah, lay, lay it on me. How do I survive an encounter with Old Man Winter? <sighs> it's easy enough to survive the encounter. Number one, just get out of his way. Number two, don't make eye contact with him as he passes by. Number three, always be prepared to spend some time out on the road after coming in contact with the ice truck. Many of the drivers that didn't survive were found frozen to death right in the middle of the ice road. I'm not talking like regular cold frozen either. I mean like flash frozen, truck and all with the look of sheer terror on their faces. The drivers that ended up in the nut house were kind enough to get out of the way, but they still looked him in the eyes when he passed by. Drove them completely insane. 
There were also some who made it through the incident just fine, but their trucks were frozen solid and they were ill-prepared. They succumbed to frostbite or starvation. I'm telling you this story to try and keep you from becoming another one of his victims and maybe be able to save your life one day. This was a lot for me to take in all at once, and I did think that Old Timer was pulling my leg for the most part, but he had said some things that got me thinking. I hadn't planned for any of the flash winter storms that have been popping up over the years. After I finished my lunch, I went to the local supply store to gather everything I needed to survive the harsh cold should we encounter any bad weather on the road. Forecast was calling for clear skies for our entire run, but weather is very unpredictable and can change in the blink of an eye. Once I had everything I needed, I went out and got it all loaded up in my truck. Some of the other drivers poked a little fun at me for bringing so much stuff. They were saying things like, You pack for a trip like my wife. Where's the kitchen sink? I'm pretty sure it's in there somewhere, too. What exactly do you expect to be doing out there? And watch out, boys, don't follow too close to him now. All that gear will sink his truck as soon as he hits the ice. They all have a good laugh and carry on getting themselves ready for the run. Old Timer didn't even crack a smile. He just winked and gave me two thumbs up before turning to leave. We now have all our trucks in line and are ready to head out. We start with a drive through town until we reach the ice road. We were all laughing and having a good time on the radio up to this point. Now it's time to get serious. It's time to get on the ice road. Going from the pavement to the ice is one of the toughest and scariest parts of the ice road due to the ice being the thinnest and the wake that is caused from the weight of the trucks getting on the ice. The ice can be pushed against the solid ground, causing the ice to crack and give way, especially when it's thinning out. Our story, The Legend of the Ice Truck by Lycan Trucker, will continue in just a moment. Road dogs, Billy Big Rigs, Big Strappers, Flatbed Cowboys, Freight Shakers, Trucklets, 18-Wheelers, Deadheads, Yard Dogs, got your ears on? Whatever you call yourselves or whatever call sign or moniker is thrust upon you, this episode's dedicated to all you truckers driving the boulevard, keeping our bellies full, shelves stocked, septics cleaned, and brains entertained with what you're hauling. In the eyes of this ratchet jaw, and I'm honored to have you listening. Maybe once in a while grab your CB, head to Sesame Street, and tell other drivers how to join this weirdo convoy. Appreciate it. May your brake checks be few, your shutter trouble be absent, and your bear bites non-existent. Keep it cool on the stool. This is Spooky Santa, and I'm 10 and on the side. We've all made it out on the ice just fine, and we're making our way towards our destination. If you're not used to traveling the ice road, it can be very unnerving. You can hear the ice cracking and popping even over the sound of the engine. Even worse is the sound of the water slashing around under the ice. At this point, the ice has also melted so much in the heat of the day that the ice is barely visible under the water. It looks as if you are literally driving on the ocean. As we continue our drive, day gives way to night, and conditions get even more hazardous as it becomes even harder to see the actual ice road under the water. Paying so much attention to the conditions, I barely noticed what was coming our way. In the distance, I can make out two red glowing dots and flames coming from higher up with black smoke bellowing out. Behind it was a wall of snow and ice for as long and as high as the eye could see. I squinted 
trying to make out what it was, but all I could see was an outline of… something. I tried to radio the other drivers, but all I could hear through the radio was static. All of a sudden came this hysterical laughter blaring from the CB. At this moment, ice started to form all over my radio. It was at this point that I remembered what Old Timer was telling me back at the diner. Everything seemed like it slowed down. What was over and done with in a matter of minutes seemed like it had been hours. I got my truck pulled over as far as I could and hunkered down with my hood over my head. I could hear the hellish roar of the truck engine as it didn't even slow down to blow past us. I was hoping that all the other guys were doing the same thing as me. I felt something slam into the front of my truck with so much force that it jolted me forward. If I weren't still wearing my seatbelt, it would have thrown me through the windshield. I realized that this was the force of the storm that was following the truck. The snow and ice was about four inches thick covering my entire truck. Luckily, my engine was still running due to the snow guard I had installed over my grill to keep the heat in the truck, and I had picked up a military-style hand shovel from the supply store. I managed to dig my way out my truck through the driver window I was able to get opened. The sight was horrific. Only Old Timer and I were able to get off to the side of the road. All the other trucks weren't so lucky and were frozen in the middle of the ice road. I checked on Old Timer first as his truck was directly behind mine. That's why he was also able to move over in time, and I figure he knew what was coming our way when he heard the laughter that came through the radio. Old Timer seemed to be no worse for wear. Although his truck wasn't able to start, we still had mine. We eventually got to all the trucks in our convoy. There were no other survivors. They had all been flash frozen, just as Old Timer described in his story. We managed to dig my truck out enough to get it moving again. It was tragic what happened to all the other drivers. So many good men gone in a flash. I did feel blessed that Old Timer and I had survived, however. I helped him gather all his belongings and transfer them to my rig. We contacted the authorities and let them know the situation. Old Timer and I were now tasked with getting all the loads delivered using one truck. The rescue team was sending out plows to clear the road and were going to remove all the other trucks minus the trailers. They were clearing a special pull-off to place the trailers in until we could get back to them. The storm did manage to make the ice road a lot more sturdy for a little longer, so we did have a little extra time to get the freight delivered, thankfully. I had started to notice some changes coming over Old Timer with every delivery we made, though it's sad to say, but once everything was all said and done, he ended up in the nuthouse. Old Timer had told me just before he became too far gone that he ignored one of his own rules. He looked Old Man Winter in the eyes as he passed. Old Timer told me that he could see the souls of all the past drivers that Old Man Winter had taken out on the ice road. I never looked Old Man Winter in his eyes, but I have been noticing some changes slowly coming over me as time goes by. I still pay a visit to Old Timer every so often, although it's not as often as I'd like, because now, as soon as I walk in his room, he takes one look at me and completely loses it. The changes I've been experiencing, however, I believe are coming from the utter disrespect of this younger generation. I've tried explaining the legend of the ice truck to them, and they just ridicule me, call me an old coot. I'm starting to get stressed more and more. I'm just ticked all the time. I honestly don't know what's coming over me. They've even gone as far as changing my CB call handle to Old Man Winter. I swear I'm going to start running them into the snowbanks and taunt them over the radio and laugh like a real psycho as I pass them. Yeah, this sounds like so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And I've got something really special planned for that new guy, that arrogant little brat. What's his CB handle again? Oh yeah, Rook. He's going to get what's coming to him in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, Rook! Just you wait! <laughs> uh, I tried to get revenge on Rook. However, it backfired on me. Turns out I was too old to play any reindeer games. 
<laughs> he, he ended up sinking me in my truck out on the ice. Yeah, yeah, maybe that game of chicken wasn't the smartest idea. Not to sound like a child, he started it. I was just trying to finish it. Anyways, I'll, I'll get back to that later. I can't visit my friend Oldtimer at all anymore. Since I'm a spirit now, it, it really messes him up. If he sees me standing in the dark corner of his room, he believes that I'm Old Man Winter coming back to collect his soul. He's, he's only half right. I, I am Old Man Winter now, but I don't want his soul. Uh, not yet, anyway. Turns out it wasn't my encounter with the ice truck, after all, that turned me into this thing. It was fate. Every hundred years or so, a new soul is picked to continue carrying on this curse. I just happen to be next in line. I've been told by the powers that be that there is a way to break this curse, but all other drivers had been unlucky in doing so. Turns out Old Timer was right again. All that needs to happen is for Old Man Winter to get revenge once and for all on the rookie who had taken his life. Since all other rookies had quit and moved away after the incident, none of the previous spirits had been able to find their rookie. I've heard word that I could be the one. My rookie happens to be a local and is so full of himself he blames me for the whole incident. And he's still an ice road trucker to this day, which gives me the opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> uh, I could end this curse for good, though. Yeah, I've already been trying. Uh, so many useless souls I've collected so far. Uh, I would be so bad right now you know, if it weren't for the overwhelming satisfaction I get from the moment they realize their butt is mine. <sighs> Some I've, I've taken just you know just for sheer satisfaction. There were the ones who tormented me in life, and now I get to torment them for all eternity. <laughs> yeah, serves them little jerks right. Yeah. Uh, I don't even get credit for my works of art. The pesky human race blames it all on freak winter weather outbreaks. However, the souls that I've collected, they know the truth. The ones who've survived my wrath are so far gone, nobody believes what they say. They just they say it's PTSD or some kind of crap like that. Doesn't really bother me, though. I mean, if that rookie doesn't believe I'm real, then, well, hey, that makes my job that much easier. I don't really know what'll happen when I find Rook, but I'm, I'm still very much looking forward to the day that I collect on an old debt once and for all. You know, I love it when drivers don't move, when I come barreling down on them. Oh, what a sight it is. I mean, at first, they don't know what to think of the spectacle before them, and then they hear me laughing. <laughs> they hear the laughter coming through the CB radio, <laughs> and then they see me clearly, and they, they turn ghostly white. Oh, but wait, the, the best is yet to come. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> then they lose all control of their bodily functions. <laughs> Poop and piss everywhere. <laughs> Boom, then frozen in fear, F frozen in place. So belongs to me now. <laughs> it is awesome. Ah, now, now for the ones who show a little respect and, and move out of my way, and I try to give them another fighting chance. You know, some look in my eyes, and they can't handle seeing the tortured souls crying out for help, and they lose it. Others don't survive the cold. Sometimes, when they're at a convoy, I can collect multiple souls at once. <laughs> no way. <gasps> Could it be? Th oh, <laughs> this just became my luckiest day ever. It's it's Rook, <laughs> completely oblivious to what's heading my way. <laughs> Me. Ooh, everything is falling into place now. This is it. I, I can't help but fire up the mic. <laughs> I begin with my laughter. I <laughs> got your butt now, Rook. I blurt out with excitement. Everything went just as expected. E except uh, something doesn't feel right. Th this encounter is different. I, I don't I don't feel the same. Something is something is changing again. Breaking news. This just in. 
All the ice truck drivers down at the assisted living facility have begun to come out of their psychotic episodes and appear to be suffering from amnesia now. They don't remember anything from just before the winter storms that put them in the assisted living facility. However, they are otherwise healthy and should make a full recovery. In other news, there appears to be another freak storm that has taken the life of another driver. A man found at the scene appears to be another driver who was once thought to be dead. More to come after these messages. In an ironic twist of fate, we're getting word that the deceased driver was J.J. Smith, a 64-year-old veteran ice road trucker that was witness to a horrific accident 35 years ago where another truck went off the road and sunk into the waters at the exact same place. The driver of that truck was Lewis White, who was 42 at the time. He was identified as the driver found at the scene today. He would be 77 years old, but reports are he still looks the same as he did 35 years ago. Mr. White also says he is burning up inside. Despite the temperature outside being well below freezing, his footsteps have melted the ice he's walked on. Mr. White has been sent to the assisted living facility where he is currently being cared for. So, I, I did happen to survive this whole ordeal. However, something is still wrong. The assisted living facility, uh, the nut house, is not sure what to do anymore. They've been putting me in ice baths constantly, trying to get my internal temperature down. The powers that be keep talking to me. They're saying that since I'm now human again, my body can't contain the evil within me. All the souls I've collected are now wanting to escape. If my temperature doesn't come down drastically, I will die once and for all. I think I'd prefer that right now. The pain is, is just too much. I'm not sure how much longer I can hold on. I'm not sure how much more my body can take. Breaking news. There was a fire at the assisted living facility last night. Sources say it was the room of Mr. White. It's believed to be a mysterious case of spontaneous combustion. This case is still under investigation. However, his room was the only one damaged at the time of the fire, and the only remains found were a skull much too small to be his, and a foot. Everything else has been turned to ash. Many other things in his room were left untouched by the fire. All his family have already been notified and accepted the remains as his. Dental records also helped to prove this, even though the skull was only a third of the size it should have been. We will hold Mr. White's family in our prayers through their time of grief. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me anytime with your questions or comments at darren at weirddarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N. Weirddarkness.com is also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, visit the store for Weird Darkness t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, phone cases, and more merchandise sign up for monthly contests, find other podcasts that I host, and find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. Also on the website, if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Stories on Thriller Thursdays are works of fiction, and links to the stories or the authors can be found in the show notes. The Legend of the Ice Truck was written by Lycan Trucker. He also has a YouTube channel called Breaker Breaker 19, which I will place a link to in the show notes if you want to follow him there. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marlar House Productions. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And a final thought from Brian Farmer. One of the most challenging aspects of reaching your goals is keeping your eye on the end result. Life is full of distractions.
I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness. Hey Weirdos! Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.